Good morning, guys. Welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. And I'm Sandra. Um, today's video is going to be um, an out and about. We're uh, parked in Get The Gear boot sale already in the queue. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. All I can say is, oh, I'm so ready for bed already. Oh, I'm wide awake, <laughs> I am. Ready to go. Yesterday, um, up in Cavartha Castle, yet again, was absolutely amazing. I come back with a full car of stock. Um, as you saw, it wasn't all antique, but it was all good quality pieces. I'm, I've actually packed all the um, cranberry glass that you've seen. I've packed the spotlights, I've packed the walking cane, and a few other bits, and I'm putting them back out today. Um, hopefully they'll return me a nice quick profit uh, to cover what I spend today because today is going to be massive. I know. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there and get digging for some more treasures. This time last week I came home with that beautiful Italian marble lamp. Um, and no guys, it's, it's staying with me. It's a damn shame really, you know. <sighs> so, Birthday um, present, Christmas. Got a full car, as you can see behind. Um, Fully loaded up, uh, quite excited, can't wait to get in. Um, and then you want to say? I will own the marble lamp. She's uh, she's um, done us uh, dinner for today. So I have, yes. We got a nice uh, salad. I'm back on my diet, guys. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am. I started it back this morning. Uh, it's hard work trying to do work in the house, trying to work on uh, online, trying to work on the market and diet. Watch and this now, right? The kids. Watch his face now. I have a custard slice. No, you don't. Yeah, um, yeah go on. As you know, guys, if any of you out there in the same boat as me, it is hard to juggle everything. It really is a nightmare. Um, but, yeah, we'll get there. I'm going to win him today on the silver. I've cheated. I already have a head start. It doesn't really count because she didn't buy it at the car boot. I bought it out of this one a couple of weeks ago, well, she so it did. does count. Well, while we're on the video, guys, um, as you know, Sandra's been buying um, bits of silver on eBay. Mm. Um, she bought a beautiful charm bracelet. Was it £7, £8, £9? Nine, £9. Pound, nine pound, About £9. Pound, uh, loads of beautiful charms and that. Uh, fully stamped up, looked absolutely fine. And after a week or so of wearing it, because she decided to keep that one, her wrist went all rashed and the bracelet went brown, so fake again. It's unbelievable how good these fake bits of silver are. You really need to be careful, and to be honest with you, unless it's got a full set of English hallmarks, I'd start acid testing all the silver. Uh, she chose to keep the piece, did it? Yeah. I've there was that. enough money's worth in the charms to justify keeping it, but the bracelet was fake. Awful. Devastating. So you really got to um, keep an eye on the silver and gold guys. Edward's going to replace it for me now. No. <laughs> it was worth gold. <laughs> she hasn't. Well, she hasn't had a proper look through the whole of massive jewellery haul I had a few days ago, guys. It's already packed away. Oh, believe me, I've already seen it, and I've seen a charm <laughs> bracelet in there, and I've seen an eighteen carat gold ring that's going to be my dad. I don't know, God, honest to God. It's already packed away, guys. I see. So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's all good. Um, let me see. I think that's about it. I'm going to do um, regular updates today. Last week, I bought and sold stock on the day, so you never got to see it. Um, so today, I'm always tired. Um, so today, when uh, I buy the pieces, I'm going to come in the car. I'm just going to give you a little look at the pieces, say this is this, and say goodbye to it because it's off back out on the stall. The reason why you couldn't do it last week was I didn't come. No. I broke my rib. I text her. I know. What's she doing? She's still in bed. I broke my rib, guys. I have. I got a cracked rib. And Moni Beer ended up going to the boat sale on his own and I haven't lived it down. Yeah. Ask her what she done. Broke my rib. 40 years of age nearly. <gasps> I'm 38. <laughs> 40 years of age nearly and fell off a flying fox. <laughs> now, a flying fox, guys, right, is almost like a swing. A zip wire. It's a zip wire, a swing that you sit on and shoot down in the kid's park. She went on there with a two-year-old and fell off. Self-inflicted injury, no sympathy. And my armpit is absolutely killing me. My injuries were inflicted by a drunk driver. 
So oh, at least I got sympathy. Haven't we just yearned about it over and over again so we could bleed that dry? Broken rib here, all he had was a smack on the head. Yeah. Knocked a bit of sense into uh, him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Still on the painkillers. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I'm going to leave it by there. Um, my uh, office is almost finished. Um, so that one's going really well. I'm making a video where I'm doing the office from start to finish. Um, plastered the walls painted carpet in uh, and then I'm gonna build a photograph studio I'm hoping to get that video finished and uploaded soon um, the office will be totally finished this week and then it's just a question of building the shelves and the photograph studio for taking the photos and putting the stock on I was gonna wait till uh, September when the kids went back to school but I've decided if I can get it done now I can work in my office during the six weeks holidays school holidays uh, rather than trying to work or wait for the kids to go to bed. So that video is coming sooner than thought, we thought, guys. Um, other than that, if I see any of you in Gatley Gate today, say hi. And then you want to add now before we go? No, not really. <sighs> I'm having the marble lamp and a new bracelet. Right, guys. See um, the roll of the eyes? Watch again. Go on, go on, go on. I'll uh, I'll see you in a wee bit. And I shall catch catch him eating chocolate and crisps at the boot sale and have it all cut into the video. Mr. Diet Beer, the scar's going to be Since dodgy. I do the editing, that's not going to happen, guys. <laughs> if you believe me, I'll tag it on the bottom. Okay guys, boot sales finished. Um, I know I said I was going to do um, buying throughout the day as I went, but I didn't buy anything that I was going to put back out on the stall. Now, my best buy of the day Sorry. is big typewriter. Um, I haven't got it yet to show you. I'll show you when I get home. However, i done a little look on eBay and what I've got is the Underwood number 3 18 inches wide carriage typewriter which apparently is very very rare and they're asking £603 on eBay for it. I bought it in this morning for 20 quid, and it's in lovely condition and when I get home later I'll show you the um, typewriter but there it is. Uh, £603.21 with £200 postage. There isn't another one on there. Um, not at the moment, anyway. Um, that, I've, as I said, I've already packed back in the car. So I'll show you the few bits I did have now today. Um, first piece here is Victorian. It's solid bronze. This isn't brass, this is bronze. You can see the colour and the way. Really nice, and you got a really nice vintage coat hook. Uh, mount them on the wall, and you got a real heavy duty coat bracket there. Um, I'm not going to use it myself, I'm going to put it back out onto eBay. I did consider keeping it and putting it in my cloak room, but I thought, no, it's too good. It's going to go for 20 25 quid on eBay, no problem at all. Really is a nice example, and I paid 50p. Then we come into a selection of jewellery and I've had quite a bit of it. First piece guys, solid silver and probably cut grass, cut glass, grass, <laughs> um, stone. I doubt very much it's amethyst, always will be a synthetic amethyst. Um, all these are cubic zirconia around the outside. It is stamped on the reverse, uh, stamped right by there on the metal. Really nice uh, pendant. I had that one and I had this one together for the fiver. Paid a fiver for the two of them, guys. Really nice large pendants. Again, this one is stamped over here on the metal again. And again, I'd say cut glass as opposed to uh, a stone, gemstone. Next piece guys, solid silver, all of it, um, with a large Egyptian pendant, uh, this one's probably 1920s and 1930s, 
and this Egyptian revival stuff was very big um, after the discovery of Tutankhamun in the 20s. Um, they left this there at the stall because they didn't uh, recognize the hallmarks. It's got Egyptian marks on the uh, necklace, one there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'm very small here. But that is solid silver, guys. That is really nice, and it was a quid. I'm really happy with that. I got a beautiful cubic zirconia and solid silver bracelet. I got one of them too. There you go, guys. We both got one. You can show me yours in a minute. I don't know where I don't know. So, there we go. Really nice, solid silver, cubic zirconia bracelet. Paid a pound. Again, really good buy. I have a gate bracelet. It's lost its uh, link. It may have had a heart link or something like that. Clasp. Um, but it was 30 pence. There's got to be... 20-25 grams of scrap in this solid silver gate bracelet it's only three bar but it is still what it is um, then there's a little bit of scrap you can see it's all out of shape and everything um, just a standard 925 ring it's a bit of scrap it's neither here nor there I'm getting excited it's nearly my turn and then final piece of jewellery guys just a little um, Austrian crystal pendant on a thin chain for again 30 pence. Oh, it's not the end of it. Sorry guys, keep going. Another Austrian crystal, but this time beautiful heart pendant. Absolutely stunning in a lovely pink. I don't know if it's capturing the colours. Looks like. But it's beautiful really and a solid silver chain. Again a pound. And just a couple of odd earrings at the scrap, I won't bother pulling them up. So, there we have it guys. Um, cars are all leaving around us now. So it's been really, really good day. That's my jewellery. I did have um, a Wade Whimsy Bear. Um, sorry about that. I did have a Wade Whimsy Bear. Now, this one is stamped Wade. The early ones, the before 1953 or 1956 they weren't stamped Wade England they were just the porcelain unmarked so if you get these unmarked and you're wondering are they Wade or not if they're not marked they're the earlier pieces there's the base that's what they all look like underneath um, this is a later one because it's got the Wade England now these whimsical figures they don't sell like they used to they don't pull a lot this is a larger one inch and a half two inches tall um, but I've got a collection of them in the house and one day I'll sell it as a collection um, it came in, it was 20 pounds guys I really couldn't leave it there even though they're not the hottest thing at the moment and finally for my buy in today no day is complete without a piece of Swarovski crystal guys we have a beautiful Swarovski crystal mouse fully stamped on the underneath absolutely stunning and again 50 pence and look at the colors on that guys the sun's catching that and it looks spectacular so <laughs> i don't know if you can see the stamp it's the swan stamp the stamp you're looking for with swarovski is the early block s this has got the swan on it which is the later mark but still a seriously nice little buy so i'm gonna call it there for my buy-in i'm really happy um, and I'll hand you over to um, Happy, or do you want me to show him me? You can do it. He makes it look so good. Oh my God, here too. Hang on, guys. Mm. Right, I was uh, stalled up, and Sandra went around having a little look, see, see what she could find. And she comes back with that. <laughs> she paid a fiver for it, guys. Now, the block selling and the stuff. I'd win said to her it's costume jewellery <sighs> it's got to be tested when I get all my last tested for her fingers crossed now first of all we have the remains of a charm bracelet with the safety chain no links uh, clasps all the links are soldered and there is no way whatsoever that I can see so that needs to be tested acid tested 
and I can't see where it's been acid tested already. So that was the charm bracelet guys, that needs to be acid tested but that's 15, 10, 15 grams on its own. Then we have a selection of signet rings. Now there's a selection of these, all seem to be set with a small diamond chip. Don't, I haven't got my uh, diamond test on me to see if they're set with diamonds or if it's just glass. Now every one of these is stamped. They stamp with a maker's mark. This find one's easier to read. Mm. They stamped 1908, and then they got a maker's mark, and then they stamped 18 carat. Um, now there's a whole selection of these signet rings. Now, to be honest with you, they look good. I'll give you a little look there now. They do look good. They're set with stones. Now, I've seen this fake gold around a lot, and they don't tend to put maker's marks and that on it. They'll just stamp it 18K and things like that. This is stamped 18 carat. It has a full set of uh, maker's marks, um, and then it has another impress mark of 1908. So, she paid a fiver for the charm bracelet and all these rings. Now, if it's right, you're talking three, four hundred pounds worth of gold here. Um, that is potentially the buy of the day. But not really, if you compare it to the uh, asking price of the typewriter, but still, <laughs> five into uh, potentially a few hundred. However, I'm going to acid test these on camera for you so you can see at the end of this film if they're real or fake. If they're fake, Sandra's not going to sell them on as gold. She's going to put them in a costume jewellery box for a few pounds a piece and just sell them off as they are. Um, but I'm looking at the charm bracelet now and I'm thinking that's looking really good. And these signet rings, there's an awful lot of stamps on them for them to be fake. They only need to stamp 18 or 9 carat for it to fake them. They don't need to put a full set of um, marks on there, maker's marks and everything else. So potentially she's got a really good buy here. But I will, as I said, test them on the film for you later on. And then you can see yourself then if they're real or if they're fake and then if they're fake you can see how good the fakes are because genuinely if someone brought that back to me at the stall today i probably would have bought it on a gamble um so you got to be careful can you get them two bits as well okay two more pieces guys of sandra's couldn't make it last week guys i had a cracked rib <sighs> still cracked falling off the uh, on toys one. Right, she had a bracelet very similar to my own, solid silver, cubic zirconia. How much was this one? A pound. This one was a pound. Tell me again. A pound. A pound. <laughs> <laughs> solid silver, cubic zirconia, guys. And then we have this final one, which is Kath HH Studio. So this is a bit of modern studio uh, silver, handmade and quite beautiful, to be honest with you. It's uh, got a bit of enamel decoration as well. You know, it's a nice little bracelet, some crystal on there. That's who made it. Again, it was a pound. And again, a pound. So, as you can see, jewellery-wise, we've done okay yet again, as usual. Uh, antiques have been very slim today in uh, in Gatley Gay. Two fields mm. of sellers, but the antiques just weren't there, guys. Um, <laughs> the typewriter was the best thing on the market today. We really had a row today, too. And we had a row as well. We'd we go in early. <laughs> Um, and I always do a run around buy in before the other buyers come in and have a head start. But they got fed up today and they were all grassing us up. We could see them <laughs> telling her from the queue outside that we were walking on buy in. And she came down and told us to go back to our car until he uh, opened the gates. So we, we stood there with smack wrists, finding it quite funny. <sighs> But that's you know how what? bad we are together, we're threatening as a team, they had to grass us up. <laughs> they were that uh, worried about uh, what we were going to buy, they, uh, they had to try and stop us going around. But that's fair enough, because I am good at what I do. So I'm not gonna, and I'm being told very well. I'm not going to moan um, at that. The upshot was I'd still done the row before them, and I was a, a row ahead then. Because... And I possibly picked up gold under their nose. Yeah, because <laughs> they were later coming in than me, and I'd already done the one row, they were always that little bit behind me. But it wasn't huge amounts to come out of the market this morning. Um, to be honest with you, 
I've been the talk of the market with that typewriter. Everybody who's seen me carrying yeah. it has gone on and on about this typewriter. It's going to make a beautiful display in someone's shop or office. So, you know, it's really, really nice. Um, and when I saw the price on eBay of them, or the asking price anyway, I was more than shocked. Mm. So, um, it's been all in all, it's been a good day. I'm sunburnt. <laughs> yeah, me um, too. Been boiling day, we had a nice salad. I didn't cheat, I didn't have a burger, I didn't have no chocolate, nothing. I've been on diets. So I've been really so you good today. See us getting thinner. Um, that's pressure for you now, it's thinner. <laughs> I think that's about it, guys. Um, obviously, the next time uh, I you tune in now, uh, the next bit I film you will lose be. about six pound. Will be the uh, acid testing of the gold, and you'll see that, and then I'll finish the film off from there. And we and of course should you'll find see out the together, guys. You'll see the typewriter as well, so. Hope you've enjoyed so far and stay tuned guys for the rest of the video for the typewriter and the acid testing. And find out if I'm going to be rich. <laughs> yeah. Okay guys, so you saw um, all the buying yesterday at the car boot sale. I didn't get a chance to finish the video off when I got home. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Now what we have here first of all is my best buy of the day. Um, it's an Underwood typewriter, it's about 18 inches, 2 foot uh, wide. Um, now, I've had a look online. When I uh, searched at the boot sale on my phone very quickly, somebody was asking nearly £700. Now, these tend to range. The lowest one I found was about £150, and they went all the way through £200, £300, £400, £500, all the way up to £700. Um, this is in relatively good condition. It does need a good clean. Um, you know, there's bits of rust and dirt and that. It's been in a garage. Um, but a real nice, I'll give it a nice sympathetic clean. A little bit of wax and that on there. And it's going to really look beautiful. Um, for somebody to have on display, it's going to be beautiful. Um, it doesn't matter to me if it goes for £150 or £200. It doesn't matter. It cost me 20 quid, guys. And to be totally honest with you, I was the talk of the boot sale walking off with this. Everybody there absolutely loved it. Um, you saw the jewellery I bought anyway, yes, they already showed you that in the um, film um, as we were going. But here's the typewriter. <coughs> it's the early Underwood, 1920s. I think it was for a newspaper. And you know what, guys? It all works. Every single bit of it is actually still working. Quite shockingly. Um, so yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Um, typewriters. I haven't sold a lot of them, but as soon as I saw this one, I knew it would be money. Um, you know, it's going to make such a nice display somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Somebody is going to really enjoy having that on display in an office, in a shop, in a printer's, news agents, anything, you name it. A nice old one like this is going to be really nice on display. So, 20 quid. They obviously they didn't want it um, to sell it at that price. I'm happy enough. So, that was my best buy of the day. Obviously, you saw, as I said, you saw all the jewellery, and I'm really happy with the jewellery. This is seriously heavy, guys. Uh, next then we have the little bag of gold that you've all been waiting to see if it was real or not. Now I'm going to give you some close-ups in just a minute and we're going to find out together if it's real or fake. I haven't tested it yet. We're going to do it together. I have my acids, my file, my acids, some tissue paper. I should wear gloves. I've done a video on how to do this safely and tidy, but I never listen to my own advice. Sometimes I'm too thick for my own good. But uh, check out that video, guys. It will uh, help you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a close-up of the bits that she bought, and then I'm going to leave it on close-up for you to um, watch the actual test. And then you can see yourself whether or not it paid off. But either way, there's two, four, six, there's seven pieces here. She paid a fiver for the seven pieces. In all honesty, even if they're not real, they're going to go out a few pound a piece, so there's good profit left on them anyway. This can be 25, 30 quid. Easy money. 
um, even if they're not right. So we'll find out now, see if we can make her, her weak. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off here, show you this um, charm bracelet. There you can see, no way, all the links are soldered, it's even got a safety chain. These are the uh, signet rings, set with what looks to be a diamond or cut glass in the centre. They have a full set of marks, they stamp 1908, then they have a maker's mark. Um, I will get an eyeglass in just a minute and uh, read the maker's mark for you. They have no other marks, no way, nothing. So for all intents and purposes, they look pretty good. If you saw that on the market with all them impressed marks, to be totally honest with you, there's not many people who are not going to buy those. It was only the man sold them to Sandra as fake. He, uh, he didn't try catching her. He said, these are fake, and it's up to you if you want to gamble on them. So we'll see from here now, guys. Okay guys, so I've just got my uh, jeweler's loop out now and the maker's mark is LS and Co. So we'll, uh, we'll have a go now, we're going to test these pieces and we'll see whether we're going to make Sandra's week, month or year or whether we're going to break her heart. So I'm using standard 9 carat acid, I uh, have a whole variety here. I bought the box set, so pick a link, any link, there we go, pick one in the middle, I always like to test a random one in the middle, give her a really good file. I wouldn't recommend you file into um, good jewellery like this if you're after anything more than scrap guys because you will damage it. You don't need to be testing to the level I am by you. So, really dug deep into this piece now we'll see now whether or not it's um, sand good luck I hope it's gold fuel love Oof. no it's not can you see that guys it is bubbling up green and smoking so I'm sorry to say that is fake which doesn't look good then for the rest of the pieces. That surprised me to be totally honest with you because it really does look good guys. I'll give them a proper wash in just a minute but just for anyone who's a little confused there's all the green that come off when it burnt the, uh, the bracelet there. Now all these rings are in lovely condition bar one. One has been cut off somebody's hand. Um, so I'm going to open this one up, there we go, it's opened up, you can see there I've opened it up now and I'm going to test the end rather than file deep into the ring, I'm just going to and there we have it guys, okay, that's filed, here we go, and again Don't know if you can see it guys, it is bubbling up as green as anything. So they are, without a shadow of a doubt, they're all fake. Which has more than surprised me because in all honesty, I can tell you now, I buy a lot of gold and silver. And I would have gambled on these myself. She hasn't lost no money, plain and simple. These are going to sell out, let me seal this acid up. These are going to sell out, as you can see, um, they're really good, good looking rings and to be honest with you, even if you sell them as, well, dress jewellery, people are going to buy it because they look like gold and nobody else is going to know the difference. They really do look the real deal, guys. So, there we have it. That is the acid testing done of the uh, gold. Or should I say the fake gold? Sandra, I am very sorry, love. I really wanted that to be right for you. 
Well guys, you just saw me uh, testing uh, Sandra's gold. I've had to refilm the ending of the uh, film because the camera played up and for some reason it deleted it. Um, <coughs> as you saw throughout the day, little snippets, it was a good day. That typewriter was spectacular. Um, I had some nice bits of jewellery myself. It wasn't a huge buy-in day, but it was a still a successful day between the selling and the buy-in. Uh, I'm really happy. Sandra's um, gold unfortunately turned out to be uh, crap, but I tell you what it does say, no matter how good you are, you really need to start carrying acids. Um, uh, for those of you who think carrying a magnet will do the job and you just put a magnet to them, guess what guys, they use non-ferrous metals to make the fakes. <coughs> they use stuff like coppers and brass and they're non-ferrous so they're non-magnetic. Uh, so don't be fooled by thinking a magnet will pick up the fakes because it doesn't. It'll pick up the pick up the cheap rubbish that's made of iron and tin and things. But it's not going to pick up the uh, the real good fakes. So you need to get yourself some acid, a good eyeglass, some files, and to be honest, with you, test it all. It's been a big run of fake silver and gold at the car boot sales recently. Um, we've both bought quite a few pieces and Sandra's even bought some uh, gold, uh, silver that's turned out to be fake off eBay. Um, I can't remember if I've told you or not. I know I was planning on telling you. She bought that beautiful charm bracelet and she'd been wearing it because she didn't buy it to sell on and her wrist went black and when we looked at it, it's fake. But it's fully stamped up, fully uh, home marked. It really is. How are you supposed to tell the difference unless you drop a bit of acid on them, guys? <coughs> Um, that charm bracelet, all the links were soldered, uh, it was a good clear crisp stamp, uh, it felt right, it wasn't bright like that bright Chinese silver you get. So the only way to be 100% now is to acid test everything. Um, now I picked a little bit of silver up yesterday in Gavilon and I'm acid testing a few at the end of the film, the Gavilon film. Um, <coughs> The office is finished. Uh, I'm gonna. That's coming into a separate video. I've got all the timbers and everything, and I'm building my photograph um, platform uh, in the next day or so. So overall, there'll be another video coming up now in the next week or so. Office is looking lovely. I'm really pleased with it. Um, so all in all, it's been uh, a good week. Gatlinge, great. Gavilon, great. Um, I've had some amazing pieces in Gavilon, guys, to show you. Um, and of course, Saturday tomorrow, so we're back to Kabatha Castle. So all in all, been really good, <coughs> good week. Hay fever is going mad. This isn't a cold; it's hay fever. Um, let me see. Anything else? No, I think that's it, guys. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that uh, almost out and about video. If you like at the car boot sale. It's very hard to film at the car boots because they don't. The people there tend to not like being filmed, um, and I don't want to film people at my regular car boot sales and upset them. And at the, at the, let me rephrase that. I also don't want to upset the woman who runs the car boot sale. Um, I know a dealer who, she was in a ba having a bad day, she shouted at him, he mouthed back, he was banned for life. Can't afford that, can't afford to upset her, so you have to bear with me, the videos will be what they can be. I would love nothing more than to put an action cam on my shoulder or something and walk around when you film and see everything. Uh, but that's not going to happen at the moment unless I go away. If I go away, I'll do it. And if I get thrown off the market, I get thrown off. I'm not worried. It was the same yesterday, I was in B&Q and I tried filming in B&Q because uh, I was buying my timbers for my uh, photograph studio and I was told I can't film in there. <coughs> so, it is what it is. Um, hope you, really hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the car boot sale video now guys. Um, be careful with the gold and the silver out there, trust me there are fakes everywhere. Hope you enjoyed seeing it guys, I would really appreciate the like and the share. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. We're on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. And we have our own website, antiquesarena.com. Thanks for watching, guys.
Bye for now.